Welcome to the fourth uh, video on straight line theory for higher maths. Uh, this video is going to focus on altitudes, medians, and perpendicular bisectors. By the end of this, you will hopefully know and understand what each of those mean and why they can be useful in questions. So, learning intentions for the first part. I want you to understand the terminology you use to describe special lines that occur within triangles and be able to use the facts about medians, altitudes, and perpendicular bisectors to solve problems. So, special lines in a triangle. If you take uh, the following triangle um, and take a line from each of the three vertex to the midpoint of the line on the opposite side, each of those will be known as a median. Key element being that they go from the vertex of the opposite uh, point and cross the opposite side in the midpoint. Again, that's going to be useful because we've learned uh, how to find the midpoint using the midpoint formula. The three medians of any triangle are concurrent. That means they all meet at the same point. And uh, that point is called the centroid. Not hugely relevant to know the name. I certainly haven't come across any uh, exam questions so far that refer to it. But again, it's just good to know these kind of terms in case they do come up. Altitudes. If we take a triangle, again, this applies to any triangle. It's not specific to any one particular type uh, in terms of isosceles, equilateral. Scaling applies to all, all types of triangle. An altitude is a line, again, from a vertex to the opposite side, but this time it meets the opposite side at right angles. Any line that does that from a vertex to the opposite side will be known uh, as an altitude. Again, hopefully, the red flag for you is the word right angles. Given it's right angles, that's going to relate to gradients because we can always work out gradients of right angles uh, of lines that are perpendicular to each other. So that's important. Again, um, it's worth noting that the altitude gives the perpendicular height of a triangle, which could be used in any area calculations um, should it be a problem solving context. And the three altitudes of any triangle are again concurrent, that means they meet at the same point. Um, this point is known as the orthocenter. And it's also important that the altitude is the shortest distance from the vertex to its matching side. There's no uh, shorter distance than that. So again, that may be useful in a problem solving context. Perpendicular bisector. Now, a line which passes through the middle of another line defined between two fixed points at right angles is a perpendicular bisector. So the key one here is the other two apply only to triangles. Um, but this one applies to, like I say, just a line joining two points, but it also applies um, to the three lines or three sides of a triangle. So it has both applications for triangles and applications outside of that. Um, again, hopefully the fact that it's at right angles is going to play its part because it is going to be basically whenever it comes up to do with gradient and perpendicular gradients, which, as I've said before, is a, you know, is a very big part of the work you're going to do it higher and again as i mentioned uh, every triangle will have, have three perpendicular bisectors so they're what was it crossing at the midpoint of the side and doing so at right angles uh, and just like before they're concurrent and that point is known as the circumcenter again not hugely relevant but it's worth knowing so this point uh, worth copying down these notes Example one, this is for you to try. Uh, if we have a point A, a point B, and a point C, and they're the vertices of a triangle, and you've been asked to find the equation of the altitude BB. If in a scenario they haven't given you the diagram, actually very unlikely um, in higher uh, exam questions, they will usually give you the diagram as well as giving you the coordinates. But if they didn't, I would ask you to draw your own wee sketch just to get an idea of how the triangle looks, you know, and uh, that allows you, if the question has further context, depending on gradient equations, that you can get an idea of if the equation you've calculated kind of fits the diagram. So marking in the diagram, marking in roughly for B3, you get an idea um, of what the equation of BD should be because you've got an idea of the gradient due to the slope of the line and roughly where it crosses in the y-axis. So second step is you would use the fact about altitudes to find the gradient of AC, then BD, because an altitude is at right angles, um, what was it, to the opposite side. So if you can find the gradient of AC, you can then use the perpendicular gradient uh, theory to be able to find the gradient of BD. 
So using the formula, using the coordinates, subbing them in, uh, we end up with a gradient of minus 2 for AC. So from the diagram, yeah, it slopes down reasonably steep, so minus 2 fits. Therefore, from perpendicular lines, the gradient of BD must be, uh, what was it, a half? What was the number? So two perp lines, you just flip the gradient uh, and change its sign. And in this case, minus 2 becomes positive a half. And again, fit, you know, check that the gradient fits with your sketch, and it does, or diagram, depending on the question. Uh, step three is you use the gradient and coordinate B with, as I've said before, what I call yield faithful, uh, to find the equation. Sub it in, watch again, double negatives. These are common areas where mistakes are made, and give the equation uh, in its standard form at the end. Uh, where one equals a half x plus two, which, as I said before, fits our diagram. Second example to try. Well, this example is just working on uh, the theory for medians. So again, if your sketch is not uh, given, draw it. Uh, it turns out we're going from vertex A, therefore the midpoint looks like it's in the positive uh, X and Y quadrant. And what was it? Uh, it gives you a rough idea. If we're being asked for the equation of the median, um, it should be from a relatively steep uh, gradient, potentially passing through a negative Y intercept. So First point, we need to find point D. As I've said before, if you want to use the midpoint formula, feel free. If you understand how to find the midpoint by just looking at the coordinates of B and C, feel free to do it, whatever. The exam will only give you one mark for this process. So I do it by looking what uh, number lies between minus 3 and 5. Uh, well, the difference between them two is 8. Therefore, come 4 up from minus 3 or 4 back, it should be uh, an x-coordinate of 1. I'm going from 5 to minus 3 for the y-coordinates. Again, that's four back, so it should be one one. Using the midpoint formula will also give you the correct solution. Now, calculating the gradient of AD, I now have uh, the midpoint D, and I also have point A, which was given. That means I can find the gradient. Subbing those coordinates in again, it uh, gives me a gradient of two, which fits. I said it'd be relatively steep, but it's a positive gradient. Subbing into my equation, sub one of the coordinates, either one one or two three, and when you sub in, rearrange. I get an equation of y equals 2x minus 1. I did say it would look like it had a y and it said it was negative, and that turns out to be the case. Third example, this one's testing your understanding of the perpendicular bisector. So if they've given us two coordinates, a and b, uh, and they want us to what was it, find the equation of the perpendicular bisector, well, there's two things you're going to have to do. Is you're going to have to, first of all, find the midpoint, uh, because that, a mid, you know, perpendicular bisector cuts at the midpoint. And the second fact is you're going to have to find the gradient. But a perpendicular bisector, as the name suggests, is perpendicular to the line which it is crossing. So therefore, if we can find the gradient of AB, we can use our knowledge of perpendicular lines. So first of all, find the midpoint. Again, whatever strategy, I'm going to go for uh, halfway between 2 and 7, which is a difference of 5. Adding it on is 4.5, or 9 over 2, depends where. I prefer fractions, but you're free to use decimals, especially nice decimals like four point five. Y coordinates between minus three and minus five, uh, therefore it's minus four. So the midpoint is nine over two and minus four. Again, the working above does not need to be shown. Uh, find the gradient of A B, so you use the formula, the gradient turns about out to be minus two fifths. Again, be comfortable with negative uh, fractional gradients. And it does fit, it does look like it's slightly sloping down, but quite generally sloping. Uh, perp lines use that, therefore the perpendicular bisector must have a gradient of 5 over 2. We then use uh, the midpoint and the perpendicular bisector in yield faithful. And again, watch out for double negatives. Again, I would suggest multiplying out the denominator of the fraction of the gradient just to simplify the working at the end, but you don't have to do that. Um, you're free to do it whatever way you uh, feel most comfortable with, but as again, try not make mistakes. So that gives me 2y plus 8 equals 5x minus 45 over 2, and then 2y equals 5x minus 61 over 2. Uh, you could at this point divide through by the 2 or just leave it as it is. Example 4 and 5 are taken from past papers, so have a go at them uh, and see how you get on. Example 4, it says find the equation of AB, the perpendicular bisector of the line joining the points P and Q. And they've given you a diagram. As I said, it's likely they will always give you a diagram. I think this question was part of a bigger question involving circles, but since we haven't covered that, that part of the question is not, uh, not being nasty. 
So we've been asked to find the equation of AB. Well, again, it's a perpendicular bisector, so we need to find the midpoint, need to find the gradient um, of PQ in order to be able to find the gradient of AB. So midpoint, what number lies between minus 3 and 1? On the diagram, it looks negative, and from that, you can work out that between minus 3 and 1, uh, midpoint of that is minus 1, and between 1 and 9, midpoint is 5. So it's minus 1, 5, which uh, you know, clearly fits the diagram. Uh, using uh, the gradient formula, find the gradient of PQ. Again, we'll check for double negatives. It turns out the gradient is 2, which fits. It's a relatively steep line, and it's a positive gradient. Since M1, M2 equals minus 1 for perp gradients, we can then find that the gradient of AB, the perpendicular bisector, is minus a half. Remember, just flip flip the gradient for PQ and change its sign will give you the perpendicular gradient AB. Using that new faith on the midpoint, uh, simplifying, we get 2Y equals minus 1X plus 9. Again, not knowing what the rest of this context of this question was, because it was uh, involving circles, leaving it as 2Y equals minus 1X plus 9 might not have been the best choice um, because we may have had to sub it in uh, to the circle equation. So again, decisions are made depending on the context of the question. But for this one, since we're only covering part of it, it's uh, quite acceptable to leave it as 2y equals minus 1x plus 9. Example 5. Triangle PQR has vertex P on the x-axis as shown in the diagram. Uh, Q and R are the points 4, 6 and 8, minus 2 respectively. The equation of PQ is 6x minus 7y plus 18 equals 0. Uh, A says state the coordinates of P and B. Find the equation of the altitude of the triangle from P. Key thing here, please, please, please read the question. They actually say in words and on the diagram that a uh, triangle PQR has a vertex P on the X axis. That means they are giving you part of uh, P's coordinate already. It's going to have an X coordinate, uh, sorry, a Y coordinate of zero because it is lying on the X axis. Uh, so not only do they say it in words, they show in the diagram. That's important because the fact that state the coordinates of P is only worth one mark, that's why it's only worth one mark because you're already given part of it in the words, you've just got to spot that. To actually work out the x coordinate, you just need to sub um, what was it, the coordinate that you have for p, which is y equals zero, into the equation of pq, and that will allow you to work out uh, x. So subbing it in, just simply doing the number crunching, and x equals minus three. So therefore, p is minus three zero. It does look like there's a couple lines of working, but there is no theory in there that really is, you know beyond the scope of what you should be able to do by the time you reach higher. So they don't tend to give much marks for work that, in theory, you could be doing in National 5. Part B, find the equation of the altitude. Well, now we know P. Um, we're able to find, what was it, the gradient for PT, uh, sorry, the gradient for QR, which will allow us to find the gradient for PT, sorry. So when we do that, we find the gradient for QR is minus 2 which for perpendicular lines allows us to find the gradient of PT. Now, subbing that in to your know, faithful using the coordinate P, which we're asked to work out in A. Remember, if you have a part A question that's usually one mark, there is a high likelihood that what you've worked out in part A will be part of part B. So just bear that in mind. You know, If you don't use what you've done in A in part B of a question or C, query it because there's a good chance it will be used. Subbing in, uh, again, watch out for the negatives, again, rearranging, um, you get y equals uh, half x plus 3 over 2. Example 6, uh, I've chosen this example because it's taken from the new hire, uh, paper 2, so it's a good example. And it's worth noting, if you look here, this question is worth 9 marks. That is a considerable amount of your uh, 130 marks uh, paper. So this sort of question, it, you know, it's, it's quite a gift if it comes up because it's usually quite bog standard mathematics. That you've done a lot of at National 5, just extended in altitude medians and perpendicular bisectors and higher. So, you know, get used to this type of question because it can pick up you quite a lot of marks when the exam comes along. So, part A say, A1 says, state the coordinates M and the midpoint of QR. Again, it's worth one mark, so you're only getting the mark for finding the midpoint of QR. Uh, in this case, the midpoint of QR is 4, 4 because the number lies halfway between minus 6 and 10. Uh, is what was it uh, between QR minus 6, 10, 16, so you either come up 8, um, back from it, um, and go from 4. Um, reason being, some people do make mistakes. I did have that coming up there, um, saying that the midpoint was 4, 4. Just in case mistakes come up, 
does 4-4 four, four fit the diagram? No, it clearly looks like it's up, more up the Y than it is along the, the X. So use any scenario where you make a mistake. Check it. Check the diagram. Does it fit the diagram? And in this case, 4-4 four, four doesn't. Turns out it's 2-4. Uh, now, part two, hence find the equation of the PM and um, the median through P. Well, since it's the median, two marks only available because we've already worked out the midpoint. We just need to use the midpoint um, to help find the gradient with uh, point P and then sub into the old faithful. So finding the gradient PM, we should have got gradient four, which fits the diagram. It's quite a steep positive gradient. Sub into the old faithful, it looks like the y intercept will be quite clearly negative. Sub and in, turns out the uh, y intercept is minus 4, which is the equation is y equals 4x minus 4. All of this fits the diagram I have. So, you know, I know this is going to be correct because it's my PowerPoint, but again, in your exam, use the diagrams to give yourself confidence of the work that you're doing. For part B, uh, find the equation of the line L passing through M and the perpendicular bisector to PR. Uh, so find the equation of L, find the equation of the line L passing through M and perpendicular bisector, perpendicular to PR. So the line L is perpendicular to the what was it, side of the triangle PR and will also pass through uh, M. So they're giving you kind of two bits of information there. They're giving you a coordinate that the line uh, is on and they're also telling you it's perpendicular to PR. So if we go looking for the gradient of PR, we will then be able to find the gradient of the line L. So finding the gradient of PR by subbing in gives us a gradient of one which uh, it's not on my diagram, but if you look, it would be roughly, um, what was it? Um, it would be roughly, um, roughly one for the gradient of PR. Therefore, the gradient of our line L would be minus one, which would fit the diagram as it should be sloping down. Um, as it should slope kind of down in this general direction. So using the midpoint that you worked out uh, previously, with the gradient, subbing at yield faithful, we get uh, a gradient, uh, sorry, a straight line equation of y equals minus x plus 6, which should fit because uh, clearly this line L, which is line running up here, is going through the y intercept above m. And since m has a y coordinate of 4, it probably makes sense it's got a y intercept um, line L of plus 6. Last but not least, uh, show that line L passes through the midpoint of PR. So what we check is we find the midpoint of PR. If P is 0 minus 4 and R is 10, 6, therefore the midpoint is 5, positive 1. Uh, to check if it does run through, we're going to be using the skill that was uh, covered in the previous video of checking if a point lies on a line by subbing it in and checking left equals right. And since left does equal right, you can make a statement saying the point satisfies the equation y equals minus x plus 6. Therefore, L must pa pass through the midpoint 5, 1.